Hello class, we're about to start section 3.1, a topic of interest, and it's on page 255. Okay, now, our learning objectives is to define interest and understand related terminology, to develop simple interest formulas, and to use simple interest formulas to analyze financial issues. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest, Benjamin Franklin. Okay, now, we scroll down here to the bottom. It says, interest is a fee paid for the use of money. For example, if you borrow money from a bank to buy a car, you must pay back not only the amount you borrowed, but also an additional amount called the interest for the use of the bank's money. On the other hand, if you deposit money in a savings account, the bank will pay you interest for saving money since it will be using your money to provide loans, mortgages, etc., to people who are borrowing money. The stated rate of interest is generally given as a yearly percentage of the amount borrowed or deposited. There are two kinds of interest. Simple interest is paid strictly as a percentage of the original amount of money. Compound interest is a percentage of an original amount as well as a percentage of the new amount, including previously calculated interest. We will study simple interest in this lesson and compound interest in the next. Number one, let's say that you get a $600 tax refund and you wisely decide to put it into a long-term investment that pays 5% in simple interest each year. How much money would that add to the account each year? Remember, with simple interest, a certain percentage of an original amount is added to the account. So what we would do here, it says it pays 5%. So we would take 5% of $600. Now, if we put that in our, if we write this out, so we can multiply, the 5% becomes 0.05 of becomes multiplication and six hundred dollars would be just six hundred dollars so if we put that in our desmos calculator that would give us thirty dollars so they ask us how much will be in the, how much interest will accumulate in a year so we could put $30 of interest will be added each year. So $30 of interest will be added each year. Okay, now we move on to the next page. Problem number two. It says, write out the multiplication you did to get your answer to question one. The next goal is to write a general formula for computing the amount of interest on, owed or earned. Substitute the letter P for the original amount invested, $600, and the letter R for the percentage you multiplied by, written in decimal form, of course. Okay, so basically, we're going to write out what we had previously. We had our $600. We had our 0 0.05 that we multiplied. And of course, that gave us $30. Now, they want us to rewrite this as a formula. So $600 is your principal. Your multiplication stays multiplication. The 0 0.05 is your interest rate, which is R. And then it equals to the $30 is the interest. Now, we go down here to number three. It says, fill in the following table, which shows the growth of the account over several years, as well as the total amount of interest earned. You'll need a correct answer to question one. And remember that this is simple interest. So the interest earned each year 
is always calculated on the original value of the investment. So of course, when you start, you're basically at zero because you didn't earn any interest. You put in the amount in the account, which is $600. But after one year, we already know it's $30 in interest. So that would take the account up to $630. Now, after the second year, you know it's gonna add on another $30. So then you would be then accumulated a total of $60. So now it'd be $660 in the account. Then add on another 30. After the third year, that'd be 90. Then the fourth year, add on another 30. That'd be 120. So that would give you $720. And then the fifth year, add on another 30. That'd be $150, which would give you $750. And then after 10 years, remember, it's $30 a year. So that would give you $300. And then that would be a total of $900 that would accumulate in the account total, including the $600 you initially uh, put in. Now, we go here to number four. It says, look carefully at the first and second columns of your table. What is the relationship between the number of years that have passed and the total interest earned. Describe it verbally. Okay, you'll put the total amount of interest earned is the product of the amount earned in one year and the number of years that have passed. Okay, now, again, the total amount of interest earned is the product of the amount earned in one year and the number of years that have passed. Okay, now we move on to the next page, page 257. It says, in the group portion of this lesson, you actually develop formulas for computing simple interest, whether you realized it or not. Now let's formalize what we discovered. In order to compute simple interest, we need exactly three pieces of information, the principal, the rate, and the time. The box below describes the terminology we'll use, as well as the letters we'll use to represent the key data. Now, interest is capital I, is a fee charged for the use of money. P is the principal, is the amount of money borrowed or placed into a savings account. Rate R is the percent of the principal paid for having money loaned or earned for investing money, unless indicated otherwise. Rates are given as a percent for one year. Time T, or term, is the length of time that the money is being borrowed or invested. When the rate is given as a percent per year, time has to be written in years. Future value A, is the amount of the loan or investment plus the interest paid or earned. Now, in the work we did in the group portion, the principal was P equals $600. The rate was 5% written as a decimal, which is R equals 0 0.05. The amount of time varied when filling out the table of interest and future value. Number one, in question two of the group portion, you should have discovered that the formula for computing the interest in one year is P times R. Use this in your answer to question four of the group portion to write a formula for finding the amount of interest I that accumulates in T years. So now, we did that already. Interest is principal times rate, but we have to also multiply it times the time. So interest is principal times rate times time. 
Now, the total value of the account after T years is calculated by adding the total amount of interest to the principal amount. Use the formula you just wrote in question one above to write a formula for the total value in terms of P, R, and T. Remember, we're using the letter A to represent the ending amount and calling it future value. So what this is saying is, is that remember how back on page 256, when we had the total amount that was left in the account, this formula here is going to give you that total amount instead of just the interest. Now, the only thing that's missing from the interest formula in order for us to get the future value is we need the initial principal added to the interest formula. So it'd be the initial amount that, that you either borrow or the initial amount that you put into your bank account and you would add the interest to it. Number three, it says use your formula Use your formula you just wrote in question two to find the future value of your original $600 investment at 5% interest in 30 years. So we want the future value because we want the total amount in the account. It's the principal plus the principal times rate times time. So the principal is $600 plus the principal is $600. The rate is 0 0.05 and the time is 30 years now one thing you have to realize too that typically our time is in years so you got to be very very careful of that so now when you put this in your calculator let me just add on one thing here if I do times 30 that would give me my interest portion so this would be $600 plus the interest of $900. And that would give me a total of $1,500 that would be in the account. Okay, now we go on to the next page. Number four, this is on page 258. Number four, it says the right side of your answer to question two should be a sum, meaning that it has two terms. Use some algebra to rewrite the formula so that it has just one term. The result should look like the principal amount times some quantity. So basically, they're asking us to take the formula that we have for future value, and we want to write this into one term. Now remember, terms are separated by addition or subtraction. So this is technically two terms. And let me write this, uh, rewrite this. This would be principal plus principal rate and time. Typically, we don't put the multiplication sign in between the values. So now they want us to rewrite this as one term. So first of all, principal plus principal times rate times time. We could factor out a P. And if we factor out a P, that means we would divide both of these terms by P. P divided by P is 1 plus principal times rate times time divided by principal would just leave rate times time. And that right there would be your one term uh, future value formula. Now it says, here's a summary of the formula we built to describe simple interest. Now we come down here, formula for computing simple interest and future value. Interest is principal times rate times time. Future value is principal plus interest. And they're showing you here the formula. Now remember, we wrote our interest as PRT. So they just substitute an I for that. So this could be easily written as A is equal to P plus PRT instead of writing the I. And then they showed it here as one term. Now, it says here, to meet payroll during a down period, United Ceramics Incorporated needed to borrow $2,000 at 4% simple interest for three months. Without doing any calculation, make an educated guess as to how much interest you think would be due. Now, here's the thing. 
we're looking at this now basically they want you to make a guess here now if i was to make a guess i would say because of how i think i would be thinking like okay two thousand dollars at four percent interest would be it would look like it'd be less than a hundred dollars so what i would say is and looking at this four and two we know it makes 80. i would think that it would be about you know eighty dollars for a year but three months is not a year it's not even half a year so i would say it would be about 20 to 25 dollars i would think now that's without me formally calculating that's how i would come out with that answer so the thing about it is is technically because they're asking your opinion is technically no wrong answer for problem number five there is the thing of whether or not you have an answer that's close to the actual answer or an answer that's kind of off so now we go to the next page we go to the top of page 259 and if we look here it says now use formulas to find the interest they pay and the future value at the end of three months okay so first let's look at the interest that's paid interest is equal to principal times rate times time now remember our time is always in years the principal is two thousand dollars the rate is four percent which is 0 0.04 and the time is in a year so it'd be three over 12. it'd be three twelfths of a year now of course we could simplify three twelfths to one fourth but since this isn't our final answer we can leave it as three twelfths now we could put this in our calculator we could take two thousand times 0 0.04 times 3 twelfths and that gives us $20 so that's how much interest you will receive now that's the interest so we could say I is equal to $20 now we want the future value so we know this is A is equal to the principal plus the principal times rate times time or we could write in our new formula a is equal to p times one plus rt and we can substitute in the values the principal is 2000 the rate is 0 0.04 and the time we know is 3 twelfths now we could put this in our calculator so we would have 2000 parenthesis one plus another parenthesis here 0 0.04 close the parenthesis open the parenthesis and type in 3 divided by 12 then we could do a double close parenthesis and we will add 2020 so our future value is 2020 now just for a little bit of clarification I know we could have just taken once we got the interest we could have just added that to 2000 get our future value but I actually wanted to use the formula with you so we are done with this um, with 3 1 now we're going to move on to 3 2 okay class we're about to start section 3 2 on page 269 it says lesson three two like a snowball rolling downhill our learning objectives it says to describe how compound interest dip differs from simple interest develop compound interest formulas and use compound interest formulas to analyze financial issues my wealth has come from a combination of living in america some lucky genes and compound interest warren buffett now let's go down here to the bottom we've already studied how an investment can grow when simple interest is calculated the table below is borrowed from lesson 3-1 in this case a principal amount of six hundred dollars was invested at five percent interest 
Our first goal in this lesson is to recalculate the interest earned and the value of the account, this time calculating the next year's interest on the entire value of the account, including previously earned interest, rather than just on the principal amount. Now, if you notice here, this is the same table that we use in section 3.1. Now we go here to page 270. It says here, compute the amount of interest earned during the second year if that amount is 5% of both the principal amount of $600 and the $30 in interest that was already earned in the first year. Find the new ending value as well. Show work, please. Okay, so basically they're saying get the total in the account after the first year, which would be $630 which we could go right here. This is the total amount after the first year. So we're going to take that $630 and multiply it by the 5%. This is what they're asking you to do. So we would take the $630. Let me see if I can scroll this over a little bit. Yeah, I got a mark. Okay, so $630. times the 5%, and that gives us $31.50. Okay, so, I didn't know if they wanted, uh, okay, that is our new ending value. So you could say the new amount is $661.50. This would be the new amount in the account because remember, we would take this $3150 and add the $630 to it. So this would be the amount in the account after the second year. Now, number two, it says we know from lesson 3.1 that we could compute the amount of interest earned in one year using the formula I equals P times R. This is using T equals one in the interest formula I equals P R T. Use this formula P equals 630 to show that you get the same answer you did in question one. So basically they want us to put I is equal to, the principal would be $630, the rate would be 0 0.05, and the time would be one year, even though they didn't write the T, because you know anything times one is itself. And when you multiply this out, it'll give you $31.50. And we could say this matches the amount of interest. And question one. Okay, now we scroll down here to problem number three. It says use your answer from question one to fill in the row of the table corresponding to after two years. Then repeat your calculations to fill in the remainder of the table, keeping in mind that in each case interest should be calculated on the new amount at the beginning of the year. Okay, so we know the first year would be $30. So that would be $630. And then we already did the second year here, which would be $31. Well, actually it's $31.50, but we would add those two together. That would give us 6150. So this would be $661.50. Okay, now, now we need to put this in our calculator. So we'll take the new amount, $661.50, and multiply by the 5%. So that would add in another $33.08. So if we add that in here, this would give us $94.58 that we would have to add on to our original principal. 
So it'd be 698.50. I mean 694.50, not 98. It'd be 694.50. All right, now. Now we will go to our next value, 694.50. Well, 58. I'm sorry about that. It's supposed to be 58. 694.58. That class, I had to get a better eraser here. So this is 694.58. So we would take our 694.58 and multiply it by 0 0.05. And that would give us another 34.73, which would give us 129.31. And when we add that to the original amount, it would be 729.31. Now, if all went well, you should have found that at the end of four years, the account would have $9.30 more when interest is calculated on the new yearly amount. So if you look here, the amount here is $720. The amount here is $9.31 more. Now, they're slightly off because they didn't do the rounding, but it's $9.31 more. Okay, now... This type of interest is called compound interest. And each time the new amount is calculated, in this case, at the end of each year, we say that interest has been compounded at that time. Since interest is being compounded once per year in this example, we say that it is interest compounded annually. You're probably not overly impressed by that extra nine bucks, but when we develop some formulas for efficiently computing compound interest, we'll be able to see that something very interesting happens in the long run. So let's get to work on developing a formula by looking for a pattern. Okay. Now we have the value at the one year is 600 times one plus 0 0.05. This comes from our formula A equals P times 1 plus R times T from less than 3, 1. The value after two years, if you notice here, we're going to end up having the same parenthesis twice. So that will be to the second power. Now after three years, we should notice that we still will have our 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05. And then it will be squared because that's what we got here previously. And then we will have a third. So this would be to the third power. Now, it says here. Now, here comes the key observation of this lesson. So fasten your seatbelt. So far, we know the following. The value at the one year, two year, and three years. Now, if you notice, the years match up with the exponents. Because even though an exponent is not shown here, it's assumed to be taken to the first power. So it says, make a conjecture as to the value after four years and five years. Recall that conjecture is a cute, cool math word for educated guess. So this would be 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05, and then take it to the fourth power. And then 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05 to the fifth power. Make a conjecture as to the value after t years, where t represents any numbers of years. So this would be 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05 to the t power. Whatever your year is, that replaces the power. Okay, congratulations. Your conjecture, you did get it right, can be formalized into our first important formula for compute from compound interest. Now, we have, this is the future value for compound interest. It'll be one plus R in parentheses, well, principal times one plus R to the T power. And A is still future value, P is the principal, R is the rate, and then T is the term of the investment in years. Okay, now, we move on to the next page.
Number seven, it says use the formula for interest compounded annually to find the future value of the original $600 investment at 5% interest after 10, 20, 30, and 40 years. Then use the simple interest formula from lesson 3-1 to find the future value if the interest is simple. So basically, they want us to use the formula that we had uh, on the previous page. So remember, it was 600, well, A is equal to 600 times 1 plus, the rate was 0 0.05. And the time, which would be T. So this is the formula we're actually using. Okay, so now, so that means this exponent would be 10. So let's do this, 600, parentheses. Now 1 plus 0 0.05 is 1.05. Well, you know what, no, let me just go ahead and write it out. 1 plus 0 0.05, close the parentheses. Now we're going to take this to the 10th power. And it gives us $977.34. Now the future value simple interest, we did that before, it'd just be $900. Because remember, <laughs> with the, um, with the simple interest, you would have got uh, $300 worth of interest because the simple interest is $30. And then you would have got it over 10 years would have been another 300 plus the 600. Well, let me do this with, with the simple interest. It would just be 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05. And now it gave us 630. Now, this would have been the first year. Well, you know, actually, I should use the regular interest formula. Um, so we would have the interest formula. We know it to be 600 times 0 0.05. I didn't put my decimal there. Okay, 30, and then we'll multiply that by 10. And that'll give us 300. And as you know, 300 plus 600 would be 900. So the simple. Now we go back here to get the next value. We could just change that exponent to a 20. And that would give us $1,591.98. And then here, this would just be $1,200. Because it would just give us 600 more in interest and add it to the original principal would give us $1,200. Now we do 30 years. 30 years would be $2,593.17. And 30 years here would just be $1,500. We know after 30 years that would only give us $900 in interest. So now we do 40 years. That would be $4,223.99. And this right here would only give us $1,800. So this is what will be in the account. If you do simple interest, after 40 years, you only have $1,800. You do compounded interest, this is how much you will have after 40 years. Kind of sort of a big difference here. Now it says, use the table to draw a graph of the future value for both accounts. Then write a verbal description of what you learned from the table and the graph. Make sure you choose an appropriate scale for each axis. And of course, label that scale on your graph. Do something to distinguish the two graphs. Use different colors or make one diagonal or thicker. What kind of growth does each account illustrate? Okay, so the first thing that I would do Okay, so first of all, we need to get this X and Y axis uh, correct here. If you notice, in both uh, situations, both of these go up to 40 years. Now, if you count these points here, you got one, two, three, four, five, 
looks like you have about 25 points here. So if we go two points for every year, or two per year, this would be two per tick mark, two, four, six, eight, this would be 10, this would be 20, this would be 30, this would be 40, and so on. Okay, and also this would be 50. All right, so now we go up the side here. We go as low as $900, but as high as almost $4,300. Okay, so if we go up the line here, if we go by 200, this would be 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and then 5,000. So we have everything we need. So the first thing I think that would be easiest to compute would be our simple interest. So let me do the simple interest first. So if we go to 10 years, that's actually, well, first of all, the zero year, we're given a zero year at $600 because that's the original investment. So the zero year, two, four, so that'll be 600. Now this right here is the starting point for both for the compound and the simple interest, because both of them start off at $600. So at 10 years with the simple interest, you had $900. So it'd be a little short of a thousand, like in the middle. Okay, then you would have 20 years would be 1,200. 30 years would be 1,500. And then 40 years would be 1,800. Now, now this right here is basically supposed to be a straight line. I kind of made it a little crooked there at the end. This is basically a straight line. And so we move on to the next graph. Okay, now we graph the interest, the compound interest. So we go 977, which is a little, a little higher, which is almost a thousand. Then we go to 1591 at 20 years. So this is 1214. It's almost 1600. And then we go to 2593, 30 years, that's almost 2600. And then for the 40th year, we go to 4223, which is about here. So that's about it right there. So basically, simple interest is a line. And compound interest is a curve that grows dramatically over time. This is exponential growth. That's basically what compound interest is, is exponential growth. All right, now we move on to the next page. It says, based on what we've learned so far, if you're the one getting paid interest, compound interest is a much better deal for you than simple interest. But what if you plan to invest your money for less than a year? you'd end up getting a whole lot of nothing. 
since the interest is compounded for the first time at the end of the first year. This will provide a competitive disadvantage for a banker as wise investors will prefer more flexibility. At some point, bankers decided that compounding interest more often would make them more attractive to potential customers. So let's say that interest is being compounded four times per year or quarterly. Going back to our investment of $600 at 5% interest, the banker would not add 5% to the account four times per year. This would correspond to a far higher rate than the 5% they promised. Instead, they divide the rate by four and pay 1.25% every three months. The first calculation after three months would look like this. Okay, so we have A is equal to 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 4. It says after six months, write a calculation that describes the future value using the same idea from the group portion of the lesson. Hint, how many times has interest been calculated after six months? So we have A is equal to 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05 all over 4. Now, as far as the exponent that we're going to put here, remember, your interest is compounded quarterly, so it's four times a year. So if we're trying to get paid for six months. That means that it would be two times that you would compound interest. Okay, so now that would be your exponent. Okay, now number two, by the time the first year is up, the interest would have kept been calculated four times. So the total exponent on the parentheses in our future value calculation would be four which is the number of times per year that interest has been compounded times the number of years that have passed. Now, if interest is compounded monthly, after five years, it will be compounded 60 times. Because remember, it's 12 months in a year times five years will give us 60 times. Now, number four, if interest is compounded n times per year, after two years, it will be compounded n times t times. Now we're going to get into the definition of what n and t is basically here on the next page. So let's take a look here at number five. It says now adapt your answer from question one into a formula for calculating the future value of that $600 investment at 5% interest if interest is compounded n times per year for t years. Your answer to question four would surely come in handy. Remember that the interest rate needs to be divided into n equal portions. So we have A is equal to 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by n to the nt power. Now, if you look down here with the general formula, and that, friends, is how you develop a formula for interest compounding a certain number of times per year. Nicely done. So this is the formula here. A is equal to, you know, A is the future value, P is the principal, R is the rate, and N is the number of times the interest is compounded per year and T is the term of the investment in years. So we're going to take this formula and we're going to go to the next page. So number six, it says find the future value of the $600 investment at 5% interest using interest compounded monthly 12 times per year and interest compounded daily 365 times per year. In each case, find the amount of interest that was earned, not just the future value. So, so we're going to do monthly, and then we're also going to do daily, just abbreviating. Okay, so monthly, we will have the principal is $600. 
the rate is 5%. The number of times this compounded is 12 because it's monthly. And the time, they tell us it's That's interesting. Wait a minute. Okay, so we're going to assume that this would be over 10 years because it didn't exactly tell us how long. So we're going to do 10 years because I don't see it in the problem here. So we do the future value is equal to the principal, which is 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05. All over, we would have 12. And then our exponent, remember, is to the nt power. So it would be 12 times 10 would be our exponent. So this would be 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 12 to the 120th power. <clears throat> now, when we put this in our calculator, it will give us an approximate value of $988.21. $988.21. So our interest, our interest would be $388.21. Because remember, we started with $600. So now, that is for the monthly. Now we're going to do the daily. The daily interest, the principal is still $600. The rate is 5%. The number of times that interest is compounded is 365 because it's daily. And then we'll just put it at 10 years as well. Now remember, we're not taking into account a leap year. So the future value, we have 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 365 to the power of 365 times 10. So that would give us 600 times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 365 to the 3,650 of power. <clears throat> and that would give us approximately $989.20. So this interest, would be $389.20. Now number seven. It says, draw a general conclusion about what happens to the amount of interest as the number of times compounding yearly goes up. Then, and this question really requires some thought, see if you could come up with a reason why this makes perfect sense. A true understanding of the difference between simple and compound interest will really help. <clears throat> Basically, in general, The number of times interest is compounded the final value will increase. So basically, that's basically it. In general, the number of times interest is compounded, the final value will increase. So because you are making interest on your interest, 
more times per year. Okay, now we come here to the effective interest rate. We've now seen that the number of times interest is compounded per year has an effect on how much interest is actually earned. It's not a huge effect, mind you, but it's at least worth studying. The bottom line is that when interest is compounded more than one time per year, the actual percentage earned is a bit higher than the stated interest rate. That's good if you're the lender, not so good if you're the borrower. In any case, there's a formula that can be used to measure this effect. First, the terminology. <laughs> the effective rate, also known as the annual yield, is a simple interest rate that will yield the same future value over, over one year as the given compound interest rate. The compound interest rate is sometimes known as the nominal rate. Now the formula, we have E is equal to parentheses 1 plus R over N to the N minus 1 where E is the effective rate, N is the number of times that interest is compounded per year, and R is the nominal interest rate. <clears throat> so number eight, a loan has a nominal interest rate of 4%, and the interest is compounded weekly. Without doing my calculations, would you expect the effective interest rate to be higher or lower than 4%? Explain. Now first, let's go back here. It tells us that E is the effective rate, R is the nominal interest rate, and N is the number of times compounded monthly. Okay, so now, basically, uh, compounded per year. And this question for number eight, it would be higher. Compound interest. Leads to more interest than simple interest. So to get the return. with simple interest, which is what the effective interest rate measures. you need a higher rate. <clears throat> now it says, refer to question eight, calculate the effective interest rate. So we have E is equal to one plus, in number eight, we have 4%. And then this right here is weekly, so it's 52 weeks in a year and we would take it to the 52 power because N is the number of times it's compounded minus one. Now, when we subtract this, this will give us a long decimal, 0.04079477. So basically the effective rate is, now rate is typically written as a percent, so you will move this decimal two places to the right. So it'll be 4.079477%. So that is the effective rate. Now, number 10, it says find the future value after one year for an investment of $10,000 at 4% compounded weekly. So we have A is equal to 
ten thousand dollars times one plus zero point zero four all over fifty two to the power of fifty two times one because we do have to multiply by a year since year was given here. So then this would give us, after we multiply everything out, it would be $10,407.95. Now, we move on to the next page. It says, divide your answer to question 10 by 10,000. What do you notice? So if we take the $10,407.95 divided by 10,000, that would give us 1.040795. And we can say the decimal part is the effective interest rate. So the decimal part of this is the effective interest rate. Okay, number 12, it says comparing investments is a very important part of any financial strategy, which savings account is a better investment. 6.2% compounded daily or 6.25% compounded semi-annually. These are different ways you could approach this. There are different ways you could approach this. So make sure you show all work and explain how you made your decision. So we could do the effective rate. So E is equal to one plus 0 0.062 over 365 to the 365th power minus one, which would be approximately 0 0.06396. And then we can do it here with the semi-annually. One plus 0 0.0625 all over two to the second power minus one, the price would be 0 0.06348. So as you see here, the 6.2% compounded daily yields a higher result. So we could say the 6.2% daily interest has the higher rate. Well, I should say has the higher effective interest rate. Got to use the proper terminology. Higher effective interest rate. Okay, so now we come to the next page, which is 278, where we have interest compounded continuously. The goal of the remainder of this lesson is to see if we can figure out what happens to the compound interest formula when the number of times that interest is compounded per year gets really, really large. Large to the point that in essence, interest is being compounded every instance of every day. Wow. As you know, the compound interest formula, where N is the number of times per year that interest is compounded in that form, it's really hard to figure out what happens when N gets, gets huge. So we'll need to do some algebra first. If we do a substitution using a letter U to take the place of the expression n divided by r, it turns out that the compound interest formula can be rewritten in the form below. If you're interested in seeing the details, I go through through them in a video that you can find either in the video resources for this lesson online or at this point in the ebook. And now it says, remember, we're interested in finding what this formula becomes when n gets bigger and bigger. 
Sadly, after our little algebra stunt, there's no n in the formula anymore, but that's okay since u is equal to n over r. When n gets bigger and bigger, so, so does u. Here's a summary of what we've learned so far. The compound interest formula can be written, rewritten in the form below, and as we make the number of times that interest is compounded per year gets larger and larger. The variable u in the expression gets larger and larger as well. So next, we'll study what happens to the expression inside the brackets when u gets larger and larger. And we'll find that we can write a much simpler form for this formula. Now, it says using a calculator, fill in the table below, round the three decimal places. What can you conclude about what happens to the value of 1 plus 1 over u to the u power as the number of compounded periods tend to infinity? Tends to infinity is the phrase we use to describe a variable getting larger and larger without bounds. Okay, so now we put 50 into this formula here. Let's do that. So we would have parentheses 1 plus 1 divided by u would be 50. And then we will put our parentheses. And we would take this to the 50th power. Now, and then we would have to multiply this by the principal. So our calculator would give us 2.692. When it's 50. Now we will go to 100, change that to 100, and then we will have 2.705, and then we will change that to 500, and we will have 2.716. And then we would do a thousand. So it'd be 2.717. And then we would do 1500. It would be 2.717. Then we would do 2000. Okay, so now we have 2,000, so that would be 2.718, and then finally 2,500, and it would be 2.718. Now it says the number that you guys should have found in question 13 is about 2.718, and is denoted E. Actually, E is irrational, so its decimal equivalent neither terminates nor repeats. So basically, E is an approximation. What is the result of the compound interest formula above when the number of times interest is compounded gets larger and larger? In this case, we say that interest is compounded continuously. You can think of this as the interest being compounded every instant of every day. So basically, this would allow our formula to become the principal times e to the rt. Because if you look back up here, 1 plus 1 over u to the u is actually represented. This all leads to e. So this 1 plus 1 over u to the u would be e. And then all we would be left with is the rt. So that would be p. This, this bracket here would be e. And then it'll be taken to the RT, which is what we have. Okay, now we go here to the next page. It says, use the formula you wrote in question 14 to find the future value after 20 years of a $5,000 account that earns 4% interest compounded continuously. Then compare that to the future value of the same account if interest is compounded annually. Okay, so... We have A is equal to P times E to the RT. 
Now, the principal is $5,000, and then times E, and it'll be 0 0.04 times 20, and that'll be our N, that'll be our RT, the rate times the time. And if we put this in our calculator, we could type it in as is, the 5,000. Then we can go here to the letter E, and then we could take that to the power of 0 0.04 times 20. Well, actually, we got to do a little differently here. I got to put a parenthesis around here. Now, if we knew the exact number, it would be no problem. But since we don't, we got to put this all in a parenthesis. And then that would give us 11,000. Okay, this is slightly off. Hmm. I guess I made a little bit of an error here. Hold on one second. All right, so it is $11,127.70. That would be one answer. Now that's continuously. Now we're going to compare this to compounded annually. So it'd be principal times one plus R over N to the NT, which would be 5,000 times one plus 0 0.04 over one to the 20th power. And that would give us $10,955.62. Now the last problem, it says finally, Let's compare interest compounded continuously to simple interest. Suppose, suppose that $50,000 is invested in two accounts. One earns 6% simple interest, the other earns 6% compounded continuously. Fill in the table with the future value of each account after each term, round, round it to the nearest dollar. Wouldn't this be great wouldn't this be a great spot to use a spreadsheet or at least the table features on a graphing calculator? Okay, so we have our principal. So basically we're taking these two formulas here. Well, actually we're taking the continuous formula and then the simple interest formula. So basically what we have here, we will have A is equal to to P times E to the RT. And then we will have A. A is equal to P times one plus RT. These will be the two formulas we will use. This will be the compounded continuously. This will be the simple interest formula. So now all we have to do is do some substitution. So, what I would suggest that we do, since it looks as though it would be easier for us to use a spreadsheet, I would create the spreadsheet so that we could easily type in the numbers and actually be done with this problem. So let me do this. Let me type in this formula. So the first, let me do the continuous interest first. I'm going to make this a y. So I could do y is equal to the principal is 50,000. And then we would have E, and then we would take this to the power of, and then we would have RT. Now we know the rate is still going to be 0 0.06. And then we will multiply that by the time. Now first time here is five years. So I multiply that by five and then close that parenthesis off. So our first value will be 60, and we want to round this to the nearest dollar. It'll be $67,493. Now, to make this into a table, we we'll hit this wheel. Well, you know what? No, it'd be better if we didn't do it as a table because that could cause, um, well, you know, actually, yes, we could just make this times X. Make this times x, hit this wheel here, 
hit the uh, convert to a table. And because it's times X, when we put in that five, we got our 67,490. And you know, we rounded it to 493. So then next, we will put in 10. So it'll be 91,000. 91,106, because after that decimal, you see here that digit, that next digit is a nine. Then we would do 15, so it would be 122,980. <clears throat> then we would do 20, <clears throat> so we had 20. We would have 166,006 dollars. And then 25. And then we had 224,084. And then finally, we would do 30. And with 30, we had $302,482. Now that took care of the continuously. <clears throat> now we will go with the simple interest. Now with the simple interest formula, we would type that in. We'll put Y is equal to, now I see 50,000, then parenthesis, one plus our rated 6%, which is 0 0.06. And then we could put our T would be X. And then close our parentheses. Now we change this to a table. Now we can start off with our five years. At five years, it'll be 65,000. At 10 years, it would be 80,000. At 15 years, it would be 95,000. At 20 years, it'd be 110,000. At 25 years, it'd be 125,000. And then finally at 30 years, it would be 140,000. And as you can see, compounded simple interest versus continuously, there is a big difference in the final value you would have. And I thank you. And this is the end for section 3.1 and 3.2. Have a wonderful day.